I've always been fascinated with Robin Hood. The legendary outlaw that used to steal from the rich and give to the poor. So I've been going over the medieval records and the early stories about him, which were called ballads and poems and songs. And I think I finally figured out who he actually was. And he was a Yorkshireman. <laughs> Stay with me to find out. And we're starting here in Wentbridge, near Pontefract in West Yorkshire. And then we're going to go camp by his grave. It was first mentioned in the early stories in 1377 at this place where I am now, the forest of Barnsdale, well what's left of it anyway. And it's a, it was a forest just outside of Wentbridge and four miles south of here is Robin Hood's Well, the earliest place name associated with Robin Hood. Now the first mention of him in the ballads is when he ambushed a knight that was en route to St Mary's Church in York to pay a £400 fine, otherwise he'd have his property taken off him. Now because he was telling the truth, they had dinner together and he sent him on his way and he actually gave him an escort of little John up to St Mary's. Now a little while later a monk from St Mary's came past the same way, past Robin's camp, and they ambushed him. Now, the monk lied and claimed poverty, said that he didn't have anything on him, but they actually found the 400 pounds that the knight had given to him, plus another 400 pounds. So because Robin found that he was lying, he lost everything. And this is where Robin's hatred of the clergy came about that because there was a lot of corruption back in those days. The uh, men of the cloth were more like politicians, they were power figures. So because there was lots of corruption and greed, he didn't like them and this sort of ties in with his death later on. Now the early stories say that he met with Edward the Comely King who was disguised as a monk and went into the Greenwood to get deliberately captured by the outlaws and when he found out that Robin was a loyal subject he forgave the outlaws and even took some of them into his service. The ballads tell us that the evil Sheriff of Nottingham used to hold longbow competitions to try and catch out the outlaws and this is where their feud started. The historical records tell us that in 1323, King Edward II went on a tour of the north because there was political crisis at Pontefract Castle in West Yorkshire. Now Pontefract Castle was home to Thomas, the Earl of Lancaster, and he was the cousin of Edward II. Edward was an unpopular king and Thomas called on the men of Yorkshire and Lancashire to revolt against King Edward II and this was the start of the Lancastrian revolt. Thomas was crushed by Edward's army and his followers were outlawed and they fled 
to Barnsdale Forest. This revolt actually connects the Sheriff of Nottingham to Yorkshire because it was the only time in history that the Sheriff of Nottingham was also responsible for Yorkshire. Now there's two Robin Hoods of this period. The first was Robert Hood of Wakefield. Now Robin was a popular nickname for people called Robert. The court documents of Wakefield Manor show that Robert Hood of Wakefield was a forester. It was part of the Lancastrian revolt and he was outlawed and his property in Wakefield was seized. Then he disappears in 1322 with his wife, Matilda. King Edward II's tour of the north was a year after the Lancastrian revolt and it was due to civil unrest so he wanted to give amnesty to some of the outlaws and even take them into his own ranks because he knew that they'd be able to handle themselves. The second record is of Robin Hood and he was a valet de chambre which was a porter for the king in 1323 but he left in 1324 with a lump sum of five shillings because he could no longer work. So let's just recap, shall we? The old stories tell us that King Edward forgave Robin Hood of his crimes. He went to work for the king, but then left a year or so later and the records show us that Robert Hood of Wakefield was part of the Lancastrian revolt and he disappeared one year later. Then Robin Hood appears shortly after as a king's servant and then he too disappears around one year after. Could they be the same person? Let me know in the comments who you think Robin Hood was. Because Robert Hood of Wakefield, the forester, would definitely be well equipped to live out in the Greenwood as an outlaw. Was there any records of his merry men of this period either? So let's look at Little John. Little John was from Holdness, near Beverley in Humberside. And his real name was Reynold Greenleaf. So Little John was his alias. This is what the old stories tell us. And we have records from 1318 and 1323 of John the Little charged with crimes in Beverley and Wakefield. And what about Will Scarlet? Well, there was a Will Scathlock recorded in this period. It was a monk that was thrown out of St. Mary's at the end of the 13th century. So maybe he held a, a grudge against the church and maybe his alias was Friar Tuck. But what about Maid Marion? Well, Marion doesn't appear until 1598 in a theatrical play called The Downfall of Robert, the Earl of Huntington. And in the play, she conceals her real name, Matilda, with the alias, Marion. But there's only one woman that appears in the early stories, and that's his arch nemesis, a nun. Now we have to get over to Murfield to Kirklees Priory.
This is the road to the Priory, where Robin Hood met his end. Now, in the old stories, he went to visit his cousin, who was a nun, for bloodletting, which was common practice in back in them days, for to get rid of any sort of ailments and stuff that you had. But he was betrayed by the nun and Red Roger of Doncaster. Now it's believed that they betrayed him because of the run-ins that he had with men of the cloth. Now there's not much left of the priory because it was dismantled by Henry VIII, but the guest house where Robin died still stands today. And it's been renovated and it's currently occupied by someone. Big heron there flying off. That's all that remains of the priory, the walled gardens. And this is the guest house where Robin Hood died. That second story window is where he believed to shot his arrow from. On his deathbed, in the guest house of Kirkley's Priory, he shot an arrow through the window and he said, wherever the arrow lands, that's where I want to be buried. And it's just up there in those woods. the arrow landed. Now I'm going to wait for it to get dark and we're going to pitch up down here 
keep him company for night. That's where we was last night. Not a bad little pitch. Kept us company, didn't you, Robin? Eh? There were a few things that happened last night. And also there were a noise coming from that direction down there. I'm going to give up this wild camping market. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to try and get my head down. Sounded like a machine that were running most at night. <laughs> but I had my earplugs with me this time for a change. But leave no trace as always. And if you like this video, Give us a thumbs up and uh, if you think you know who Robin Hood was, if you can prove me wrong, say it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>